Katrina's Creations. You're not seeing things. It's Monday, not Saturday, and I did just post this last Saturday, but I had a couple of exciting things happen, and I didn't want to have to wait till the end of the week to share them with you. So, um, something came in the mail today. If you watched my podcast on Saturday, you would have heard that I won a 600 subscriber giveaway that was on the Yarn and You Girl, You is E-W-E. -E. Uh, her name's Janine, and she lives out in Washington. And if you don't watch her podcast, she's a lot of fun. She does a lot of um, design work. She has an online uh, yarn store as well. So check her podcast out. Um, I will put a, um, I'll put a little card up or something to show you where, how it's all spelled and everything. And in her description box on her podcast itself, you'll see the link to her, her yarn store and everything. Um, but anyway, I won her 600 subscriber giveaway. So it came in the mail today. So here it is. I'm not going to show you the other side because it's got her address on it and mine. So anyway, so here's the, here's the envelope. There it is. So, I know it's a project bag, and I know it has teacups on it, so we're going to open this one together, and yes, I made sure that I am not cutting through the project bag while I'm opening this, so here we go, I'm not looking, not looking, I'm looking, oh, it is adorable, look at that, we have the little teapots. And it even has little cakes on it. This has little cakes right here. Little cakes, little teacups, little saucers. Let me open this up. Oh, it's a zippered one, too. I have never had a zippered project bag. And please ignore the crinkling while I get this all the way open. I've got to cut this again. Okay, there's some tea inside, there's some, oh it smells good too, um, vanilla, vanilla honey bush, and ginger peach green tea, so there's stash tea inside, and... Here is the bag. Let me turn it this direction so you can see how adorable that is. And here's the label. It's made by a company called Stitching You Bags. So let me get this up here so you can see it. Stitching You Bags. And there is a cute little progress keeper. A little teapot. That's, there we go. That's better. Little teapot progress keeper. And there's her label on the bag itself. And then the inside is like blue, like little leaves. There you can see. There. So this is adorable. Janine, if you are watching, thank you so much. It will definitely get good use. Um, I love project bags, and I really don't have that many of them because um, I'm not a very good sewer. I can sew basic stuff like drawstring bags, but I've never had a zippered one, so I'm excited. And this one has a box type of bottom, so it will stand up. So let me open it all the way up here. Oh, there's something else in it. That's what I was smelling that smelled so good. It has like one of those like a mug cozy and it's in the same pattern but it's got I think it's lavender it's got something smelly goody in there I think it's lavender so um yeah that was inside here I didn't see that well how cute is that that's what I was smelling that smelled so good I thought it was the tea so here is the bag it's perfect for like um like sock size so that will be absolutely perfect because if you watched on Saturday, I'm going to be knitting a pair of socks. I know where it's going to go. It's going to live in here. 
So, oh, that smells so good. So, yes. Anyway, one more shot. Here you go. There's the bag. And again, it is from Stitch and You Handmade Original Stitch and You bag. So, that is my project bag that came in. And then I was at church yesterday and one of the ladies there works at the local fairgrounds. Um, they put on like a 4-H fair, but anybody can enter even if you aren't in 4-H. So she was talking to me because she does a lot of sewing. She's a home economics teacher. And um, so she was like, why don't you enter some of your knitting stuff? She's She's been telling me for several years I should enter and I haven't done it. I'm going to now. So I'm... I'm going to enter the South Mountain Fair. Um, this is in Arntsville, Pennsylvania, which it's kind of out in the middle of nowhere, but it's above Gettysburg. We'll put it that way. It's, it's easier to find. It's above Gettysburg. And so there are some, there's several spots that I can enter. I've been looking through the book and kind of circling things that I could qualify for. And so I actually want some advice on a couple of things. So I'll show you what I'm going to enter, definitely. And then if you guys can put some things in the comments below to, to give me your opinion on which shawl I should enter. It has to be something that I've knitted this year. So the little sheep is definitely going in there because they have, there's this little, there's this little fuzzy butt. I keep calling him a him, it's a her. So, um. So, yeah, see, she's got her little, her little fleece piece here because she is knitting directly off of her body. So she is, she is called From Sheep to Shawl, and this is a pattern I designed, and it's available on Ravelry, and it is a $3 pattern. But anyway, I'm going to enter her, and I'm going to be entering the shawl design that I came up with, um, which you guys are probably totally sick of hearing about by now, but I'm going to enter not the red, white, and blue version of this, but I'm going to enter this one, which is the banner unfurled. So I'm definitely entering this one. And here's where my dilemma comes in. In the shawl department, I have, I have several shawls that I finished this year that I could enter. But I tried to pick two of my favorite shawls because I've, I've done the Bendy Arrow. I've done um, the Drakenfelts. And I finished all of those this year. So I could do either of those. But my two favorite ones, I think, and they're favorites for two different reasons. One is my On the Spice Market, which you all have seen before. But I'll hold it up just in case you're new to my channel. There is my On the Spice Market. The other one that I finished just recently it was my Forever Shawl because it just seemed like I worked on it forever. And that would be the Find Your Fade Shawl, which is like humongous. It's eight feet long. No kidding. It really is. I haven't even blocked it because as big as it was, I really didn't need it any bigger. So here it is. I got to roll back some to show you this. And then it goes across and over to here. So it is between, for the shawl competition itself, I'm debating between the Find Your Fade and the On the Spice Market. So leave a comment down below. I really do need your help, guys. Let me know which one do you think I should enter. So, um, yeah, let me know as soon as you can because I have to enter in the next couple of days. So if you're watching, like I said, leave a comment below and tell me which one would be your vote. So that being said, next Saturday when I do my podcast, I am going to be doing a segment on the history of lace knitting. Now there's lots of, of um, shawls and different things that are out there that have portions of lace that you can do with any weight um, all the way up to like a worsted or even a heavy. Um, just like the Find Your Fade would not be considered a lace shawl but it has 
but like right here, it has portions of lace. Um, but what I'm going to be talking about are shawls that are all lace or almost all lace. So I'm going to be doing the history of that. There's basically three different types of shawls, and I'm going to talk about how you can tell the difference and what unique characteristics they have and when they were invented and where they were invented. So if you're interested in something like that, make sure to tune in on Saturday, usually later in the evening is when it posts, um, and we'll be doing the segment on the history of lace knitting. So thanks again once, for, um, once again for watching, and let me know what you think about the shawl and which one I should enter. So I'll see you on Saturday. Thanks again for watching, and Janine, thanks so much for the project bag it'll go to a, it's going to a very good home it's going to be it's going to be loved so thank you <laughs>